Hi, I'm Fred Cook, President of Schaefer Marine. I'd like to take the opportunity to show you the concept of boom furling, along with some of the special features of the Schaefer system that might make it ideal for your boat. We often are asked at boat shows about, well, why boom furling? Well, the key advantage is that all the control lines for a boom furler can be run to the cockpit, and the halyard, the retriever line, and the main sheet are all conveniently located in the cockpit. So there's no need to get on deck with sail ties or to come on deck to do reefing. It's just a safer overall system. It also has a big advantage over in-mast systems. We retain full battens, full roach, full sail area, and the performance of your boat is not affected by it. It also reduces the complexity of the mast and the weight of the mast aloft and puts all the mechanical systems on deck where they can be accessed and maintained. In the event of any problem with a boom furler, it can be dropped on deck like a conventional mainsail. This is a real problem within mast furlers when they jam. So what are the key features of a Schaefer system that make it better than the competitors and make it ideal for your boat? Well, we had an advantage in that we had a chance to go sailing on all the other competitors' boom furlers. And we saw a lot of things we liked, but we also saw some real shortcomings. The bulk of them involved the transition from the roll of the sail onto the mast track itself. A lot of people were trying to get the mast track to conform to conventional mast track systems. And when you go into a bolt rope, there's a very difficult transition here that's very hard on the sail, it's very hard on the luff tape. The other key problem we saw was the compression of the battens. As the battens started to compress against the mast, and this happens on full roach sails with full battens, the batten's always driving forward. And the problem was that the batten would bind the luff tape against the track, causing friction in the system, and also doing having unacceptable wear on the luff tapes themselves. So we set about to try and solve that problem, and we came up with our own design for a mast track. This is a C-shaped extrusion, holds the batten pocket separate from the luff tape itself. So as it's transiting in here, each one of the battens that's going into the sail will never be able to bind against the mast track. As the sail goes up, these batten pockets are always running against the inside of the track. The luff tape runs smoothly up inside this nice stainless steel feeder, enters into the mast track, and there's no binding as the sail is raised, no matter what point of sail, because everything is turning on the same axis of rotation. The mast track turns with the sail and is in line with the gooseneck pin and the van pick. So no matter what point of sail, the geometry never changes on a Schaefer system. And there are no hard spots, no binding of the mast track from a lead in or from the compression of the sail itself. One of the other key decisions in our design process was to locate the drum unit that drives the mandrel and rolls up the sail at the aft end of the boom. That allowed us to bring the sail as close to the mast as possible. It also simplified the location and the assembly of the gooseneck. In addition, this sort of a clearance on this assembly allows the boom to go 180 degrees from port to starboard and still operate reefing or furling the sail. Once we made the decision to put the drum unit at the end of the boom, we designed a really nice machined aluminum end cap that houses the drum unit. And this becomes the end fitting for the end of the boom. We have a control line that goes down the tunnel that's on the bottom of the boom, inside the boom, turns over a low friction shiv at the angle that's necessary to get a clean, smooth roll into the drum portion that's right here. The mandrel itself turns on low friction Torlon race ball bearings, which are non-corrosive, high strength bearings that can be easily flushed with water. The capacity to a drum is more than adequate for the luff length and the number of rotations required to roll up the mainsail. Now that we've had a chance to take a look at the features of the Schaefer furler, as well as the basic concept of boom furling, why don't we go back to the factory where I can show you more details of our design and also show you how it's made on some of our state-of-the-art equipment. Schaefer's factory, located here in New Bedford, Massachusetts, has been manufacturing marine hardware since 1967. Over the years, we have established a reputation for innovation, quality, and customer service.
here at the factory, we've had a chance to set up our two boom furler extrusions. The smaller of our two boom furlers is called the beta boom, and it can handle luff lengths of 44 feet and the overall lengths on the boom of 16 feet. The larger can handle 54 feet. This is called the gamma boom. It handle a luff of 54 feet and an overall boom length of 20 feet. This end view gives us the opportunity to talk about a few of the details that make this special. You'll notice that this is a very large single piece extrusion. This is very difficult to do. There are only a couple of extruding houses in the world that can do this with this thin wall. The advantage of this over trying to piece it together from several different extrusions is that we get a stiffer extrusion, lighter weight, and it's less susceptible to corrosion. A few of the details on here is we have an offset slot, and that allows the sail not to be rubbing against the boom extrusion when it comes off the mandrel. There's also a round, rounded uh, oversection here which has a groove, which both of those grooves are used to put a sail cover on. At the bottom of the extrusion, there's a tunnel that leads the retrieving line from the bottom of the gooseneck down the boom all the way to the drum at the other end. One special detail here which makes for very easy installation is the fact that we've included a track at the bottom and we use conventional track slides to hang main sheet locks and we also use it for a heavy duty lug to locate the rigid vang. The inner extrusion is called the mandrel, and the mandrel has a very heavy wall, round extrusion, so it's a nice smooth roll, and it can handle quite a bit of bending load and a lot of the torsional loads that we're going to experience our reefing and furling. Here we've set aside some examples of our boom end fittings, both the gooseneck for the gamma, and this is the drum end. What's interesting about these is both of them are cut from a 70-pound block of aluminum. So why would we do that? Well, what happens is most people would use, choose to make this a casting. We chose to make it a machining because we get a stronger, lighter part. We can make the part thinner wall. And we don't have any problem with voids or pinholes that are common with sand castings. We also get a very nice finish level, which accepts anodizing exceptionally well. These parts then get assembled with a special machining which adapts to the mandrel. And we put in a dual race Torlon bearing at either end of the mandrel. We choose Torlon bearings because they have very high load capability and they are non-corrosive. And this open race design that it provides allows us to flush the bearings and remove any grit very easily. Similar to the machining here, we start with a heavy extrusion for one of the gooseneck fittings. So here's that, and then we machine it down to one of the wings for our gooseneck fitting. In the end, that becomes this fitting. The assembly for the gooseneck and the vang lug look like this. They have a number of fasteners that are through bolted to the spar into backing plates. The wing nature of this allows us to adjust to different spar widths and, and thicknesses, and it makes a secure connection for both the gooseneck and the vang lug against almost any spar. But as boom furlers tend to be heavier than conventional booms, this is a necessity in order to secure the boom to the mast. This video was designed to show you some of the basics of boom furling, along with some of the particular elements that we believe make the Schaefer system better. If you have any questions, or if you'd like more information about which system would be ideal for your boat, please call or email us at our New Bedford, Massachusetts factory.